Samuel Sewell's The Selling of Joseph is a groundbreaking piece of literature that addresses the moral implications of slavery. Written in 1700, Sewell's tract was one of the earliest protests against the practice of enslaving African people in America. Through a combination of religious, ethical, and legal arguments, Sewell presents a compelling case against the inhumanity of slavery. The essay opens with a direct and powerful assertion that immediately sets the tone for Sewell's argument, the end of divine providence in bringing the Africans into this part of the world seems to be little understood. He challenges the prevailing belief that Africans were inherently inferior and meant to be enslaved, emphasizing their equal creation by God and their possession of similar human faculties. This foundational argument against the common justification for slavery serves as the basis for Sewell's condemnation of the practice. Sewell employs biblical references and religious principles to denounce the enslavement of Africans. He draws on passages from the Bible, particularly the Golden Rule, Do unto others as you would have them do unto you, to emphasize the inherent immorality of enslaving fellow human beings. By appealing to religious values and Christian morality, Sewell seeks to evoke a sense of guilt and righteousness in his audience, urging them to consider the ethical implications of their actions. Moreover, Sewell employs legal and judicial reasoning to bolster his argument against slavery. He criticizes the legal system for its failure to acknowledge the rights of enslaved individuals. He argues that the laws allowing for the buying and selling of human beings are inconsistent with natural law, which transcends human-made laws. His legal argument hinges on the idea that slavery violates natural rights, a concept deeply rooted in the Enlightenment philosophy that was gaining traction during Sewell's time. In addition to moral and legal arguments, Sewell employs practical reasoning to challenge the economic justifications for slavery. He contends that the practice is not economically beneficial in the long run and that the cost of sustaining enslaved individuals outweighs the purported economic gains. This pragmatic perspective undermines the economic rationale often used to justify the continuation of slavery. Throughout his essay, Sewell's writing style is assertive and persuasive. He employs a direct tone and logical progression of arguments to persuade his audience of the immorality of slavery. His use of rhetorical questions, such as, is liberty such a dainty thing that men can be contented to part with it for chains and bondage, encourages introspection and challenges the prevailing societal norms. In conclusion, The Selling of Joseph by Samuel Sewell is a powerful and multifaceted condemnation of slavery. Sewell employs religious, ethical, legal, and practical arguments to dismantle the justifications for enslaving Africans. His writing serves as an early moral critique of slavery in America, challenging the prevalent attitudes and practices of his time. Sewell's work remains a significant contribution to the abolitionist movement, advocating for the recognition of the inherent humanity and rights of all individuals, regardless of race.